Now, I'm not going to lie, this was actually one of the most entertaining and great Jahi episodes I think the show has shown us to date. Great new opening and ending song, visually really enjoyed, the songs are a bop. But there was something about a mixture of the great Jahi kind of understanding what love is in the form of what she thought was a tomato plant, which turned out to be something that she spent far too much money on, to the idea of lying to Druji in order to get away from the fact that she doesn't collect any crystals and she somehow defeated the magical girl and the magical girl outside is a human who is now an underling to which then she has to pay the giant bill that was originally a reward for the great Jahi to then ending on sister bonding. This episode was chock full of great content that further fleshes out and humanizes the great Jahi while not only does the opening tease the demon lord, the number one of the dark realm, they actually end this episode with the final shot being on her as well, meaning that most likely the remaining nine episodes are probably going to be targeted towards adding that character into the mix, which if the opening is anything to go off of, she has a bigger stomach than Jahi, and there's no way that Jahi can deny her anything, so I think her wall is going to be even emptier than it already is. Is the great Jahi going to have to go get a cash loan? God damn, imagining her trying to pay back interest would be a treat to watch. Like, this episode wasn't flawless on the production side. I mean, the very first couple of shots in this episode they pull away, you can tell they were struggling to animate some of the scenes. But does that ruin the episode? No, it'd only be an issue if the entire episode was sloppy art and animation. But very quickly, the episode did find its groove and became an absolute blessing. I think the idea of taking someone who is so evil in the dark realm and making her needing to love and do things like that, naturally the assumption would be she would get a pet in order to learn what nurturing and love truly is. But the idea of a tomato plant's pretty interesting. She's someone who naturally struggles to eat and pay the bills, so for her, growing her own produce is something that makes sense. The issue is that she's trying to grow a single plant. Not only just that, which, hey, maybe she'll have some side dishes to those horrible noodles and beans she eats. However, the issue is that because of the circumstances surrounding this plant, she ultimately, there's a shot where she has all these, like, bug repellents and things to keep the plant safe. She must have spent more money than she normally would on a week's, maybe even a month's worth of groceries, depending on how much they charge for that. Maybe it's like a Costco situation, it's bundled so it's a lot cheaper. Either way, the amount of money she spent on, even if they turned out to be cherry tomatoes, which they're delicious, I understand the appeal of wanting to grow your own. The issue is that she spent more money on how many cherry tomatoes she would get from that plant that she could have just probably not only bought cherry tomatoes from the store for less money, she probably could have just done so much more with it. But on the flip side, you know, sometimes she wastes her money and you think, did she really learn anything? Here, I definitely think, despite her pushing back and being, you know, she threatened to kill the plant, she also, th honestly, I guess I'm not sure if he considered a threat or a reward to be the left hand or right hand man to the great Jahi. She did learn to have compassion, and she cared for something. And I think that's the type of development that really makes a show like this stick out and really prove itself among similar series out there. The idea of Druji, right? There would be so many easy ways for Druji to be stepped on, and trust me, she loves being stepped on. I think we know how much pleasure she gets from that, especially if it comes from Jahi. But the idea that she lies, and Jahi lies a lot. They stack and stack a sack upon Druji. And seemingly, based on the formula, the lies aren't going to be exploited or, I guess, revealed until probably closer to the end of their character arc. However, she doesn't get away with things. Like the idea that she basically wanted to be punished. Okay, well, I'll punish you. And she puts her down, she steps on her, and she basically gets a bunch of food that she normally wouldn't be able to afford. And normally, in a show like this, she would get that and would move on. She got to step on Juji, Juji gets the pleasure from it, everyone wins. But rather, Jahi always ends up having to pick up the tab, or something else happens. So there's always a way to punish Jahi, so that bad deeds aren't rewarded in the case of lying to Juji, lying about what she's really doing in the world. So therefore, she had to pay the bill. But in terms of basically, you know, the idea of actually caring for something, putting effort into it, she was able to grow a plant. Yes, the plant didn't turn out to be what she wanted, but she did learn that hard work, if she would have read what it actually was, it would have benefited her. And she is learning what it is to nurture. I think the idea that the landlady, of all characters, 
actually got talked down to by Jahi, and it's something that felt well warranted. The fact that, you know, I can understand why she did run away from home on one hand, because, I mean, there's a very different physique about these sisters. If one wears the other clothes, well, very much it is going to be ruined for one of the characters. However, it's very immature, she's very childish, and she doesn't do anything, right? I mean, free rent is something that's very intriguing, and when that's not enough, I'll do the housework, and you just see her light up. But the issue is that, you know, someone's apologizing, saying you have a home to come to, and very much she understands what that's like. The fact that she could not only act like a mother raising a child in the form of a plant, and scolding a bratty child in the form of the landlady, it shows just how far Jahi has come. But it also shows you how much further she has left to come. Druji is a character who I'm firmly convinced, and I talked about it early on in the reviews, that I do think if Jahi was honest and she really revealed what's going on, while maybe Druji would push back initially, I do think she would change her opinion because she respects Jahi too much, as long as she still got discipline from time to time because, well, that do be her kink. I really think this show is one of this season's, one of last season's, and one of 2021's best series. I've mentioned it probably over half the time I've covered an episode, that it's one of, if not the most anticipated thing for me every week. And it's easily always within probably the top five to top three, depending on what the previous episode did to set it up. Like, as an example, this episode, one of the most memorable, one of the most impressive for character development, but comedy gold. I think the idea of her literally taking out a plant for walk for sunshine is just absolutely ridiculous. So the excitement I get from an episode like this puts next week's episode as one of my most anticipated top three, maybe even most anticipated episodes for next week. And no matter what, this show is always a blessing. It's one of the most refreshing. It's one of the most entertaining. Like, this is a show that if I had a series, like, equivalent to The Great Jahi every anime season, I doubt I would ever grow bored. It's fresh, it's exciting, and it continues to blow me away, and I really enjoy the new opening and ending songs. I mean, visually, like, at certain points they may not blow you away, but the way the colors light up and the different character reactions, really well done and really gets me excited for, you know, the Demon Lord number one of the Dark Realm and Jahi to start interacting more with each other, because you know that's going to be a riot, and even more comedy gold, and it's nice that, you know, Kokoro was actually a part of the opening, meaning that she will continue to be relevant, and you know how much I love the interactions between those two, so yeah. Great episode, flawless, one of my personal favorites, probably in my top three Jahi episodes, if I'm being honest. Let me know your thoughts and feelings down below your favorite moment, and what do you hope to see going forward now that the opening kind of gives us an idea of where the second core is going to go from here? Let me know your thoughts down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.